devil don't want y'all listening to that. Faith without works is dead. Being alone. All you devils out there that Too. So you need to get some Jesus in your life. Yeah. Cheap God. Oh, are. Turn the other crazy stuff off and get in the word and learn your word. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Let's get into this. First, we're going to pray. We're going to get into faith without works. It's dead, being alone. All right. Let's get started. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to watch over us, guide us, and protect us, Lord. Bless us away from all evil and all the devil spirits and all the devil's ones, all Satan's workers. Uh, Lord, we ask you to cast them back to hell where they belong and keep us away from them and keep us away from temptations. Uh, Lord, Lord, bless us with your Holy Ghost. Help everyone to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, help them to receive your word today, Lord Jesus Christ. Help me to preach your word, Lord. I can't do it without you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. All right. All right. Faith without works is dead, y'all. Part two is, is now in service. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure your pastor and everybody else not going to be speaking about this subject. So I got I to gotta address it. Um, but I want to address a couple things, man. I've been seeing a lot of crazy things online and a, a, a bunch of bunch of crazy stuff, right? Um. First of all, I want to say, uh, uh, ain't no church out here jumping around, bumping into each other. Uh, y'all need to be careful of these cults, man. Let me tell y'all something. These cults that are pushing uh, emotions out of you and encouraging you and, and, and taking your money at the same time. Um, and taking your time at the same time. Listen, your time should be spending the word of God. I don't care about none of that around these other people and all this other stuff. There's a time between you and God. And in order to develop a relationship between you and God, you need to get in your word. And if you go into a church and they're not going over the word of God and you can't get in the word of God and you ain't learning, you need to get away from that church, man. You need to get, you need to get right with God. At the end of the day, it ain't going to be you in that uh, 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 prosperity and all that uh, running around, acting like bumping into each other and all this other stuff, talking about you of God. And you got your suits on, your three-piece suit, trying to show off to everyone, the whole world. Listen, man, God hates a proud look. God hates a proud look. You think God cares what John the Baptist looked like out there eating in the, in the wilderness and all this other stuff? Let me tell you something, man. I've seen a lot of these things, man. These are cults, man. Y'all in Mormon cults, apostolic cults, Pentecostal cults. Y'all in these uh, Catholic cults. Y'all in these Muslim cults, and you're not even of God. You're not even getting closer to Jesus. Some of us uh, uh, are being led astray by people that don't have your best interests at heart. Y'all got to be careful. There's a lot of cults that are trying to catch your mind and keep your time, and it takes away your time away from God, yet they call it church. No church going to take you away from God's word and, go and get you in there doing all this other stuff. When we go into praise and we go in to give honor to the Lord, listen, it's silent. Sometimes you be in your room uh, 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 yelling to the Lord, but you're giving praise and honor to the Lord. You're not trying to show off to others about your singing skills or about your crying skills and about all this other stuff. Um, 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 a lot of Hollywood pictures. And a lot of Hollywood movies play on your mind and play on your emotions. They play it. They push it out, right? Movies. Um, uh, 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 what's that? America's Got Talent crap. Or American Idol. Uh, all these other devil uh, things. Uh, Survivor and all this other stuff. They play on your emotions. That's why you got the music in the background when they speak it. Right? So you wonder, well, that, that's the Holy Ghost, man. I was out there crying in the church and all that. I, let me tell you something. I felt something like that in the church, right? And it wasn't, and it wasn't of God. I could be real with you because this person was talking about divorce and remarriage. The whole congregation was divorce and remarriage. This would be real. So y'all need to be very, very careful about these cults that y'all getting in. 
And especially in these last days where God said that many will fall away. Many will go astray. Many will go to the Satan. So y'all got to be very, very careful. I say this once again, man. Not every church you think. You start asking the doctrines and seeing if everything line up with the word of God. And if they do not line up the word of God, what are you doing in that church? All right. A church should be a family. We should all know each other. We should talk to one another. Right. At the end of the day, if you don't know that person's name, you don't know this, uh, you ain't asked this person what they're doing, and you laying hands on people, and, 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 and these people of, uh, uh, of the devil got uh, witchcraft. Listen, I ain't laying my hands on no homosexual. Mm -mm. The reason why, because God commanded not to do that. You don't lay your hands on evil. You don't lay your hands on, uh, man, you don't know what that stuff does, man. You don't know if that stuff going to get back on you. You can pray for somebody. Absolutely. But you need to be extremely careful. Extremely careful what, what's going into your mind and what's going into your heart and what's going into your uh, uh, body. The devil's just trying to enter in. So he needs one little sin, one little thing to get up in you. There was a movie that was called, uh, let me look it up. And I suggest everybody watch, even though it's like a murder movie, but it's, it, it, it speaks, it shows you of the devil and the devil's song and how the devil works, right? Let's see if I can find it. I know Denzel Washington is in it. It's an old movie. And again, it's got murder and cops and all that other stuff. But that's what the devil does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But it was a good reputation of how the devil operates and how the devil works. It's called Fallen, all right? That's the movie. And it shows how the devil uh, and demons, how they enter into people and how they get into people through sin and stuff like that. And some people they can't enter and they're trying to enter in. Um, and it's very, very important because that's actually true. The devil's trying to enter in us. And y'all need to be extremely careful who y'all dealing with. I'm not coming to an agreement with a lot. I don't care who they are. And then I'm now I'm seeing people playing church. People playing church. Listen, man, you don't need to be, if you're gonna be all if you're gonna be into this, you gotta give up everything to serve Christ. It's not a game, it's not something to play around with. Listen, you playing around with God. Alright? Oh, I'm gonna be in God today, and then I'm gonna be in God. I'm not gonna be in God tomorrow, and I'm gonna be in God on Thursday, and I'm gonna be uh, uh no man, that's not how this works. My life is dedicated to God. Dedicated to Jesus Christ. I've been delivered. I got no steps in the world. No signs of me being in the world. Why? God's delivered me. God has changed me. Why hasn't God changed you? Is it because of your pride? Is it because of, uh, of the things in the world? But let me tell you something. You can't be out there playing church. Going on Sunday. Going this place the next day. Doing this. Doing that. doing the uh, Hanging out with your buddy. That's other devil. You know you're the devil, and yet you're still hanging out with him. Y'all playing church, and y'all playing with the wrong one, You and you asking God to deliver you. And you don't really want to be delivered. Let's just be real. You want to you wanna have at least a couple steps in there. You want to do it. You know, you want to be in that world a little bit. Ain't how it works, man. My life every day is about God. Centered around God alone. We want to serve God. I want to make it to heaven. Some of y'all say y'all want to make it to heaven, but don't want to put in the effort to, uh, 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 to be of God and to make it to heaven. You want both. You want your cake and you want your cookies and you want them all at once. That ain't how this thing works. We are playing church and, and, and I'm getting sick and tired of looking at lukewarm Christians all day, every day. And then they talking about they represent us. You got to be out your mind. Got to be out your mind. Listen, we make a mistake if we was a uh, 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 sin. We stop that sin. We confess that sin. We know that that sin is wrong. Repentance is a whole change of mind on everything, man. Change of mind on the sin. Not just repent and keep doing it and then go back to it and then go serve the Lord for a little while and then go back to the, to the sin. That ain't how repentance works. 
Repentance is an emotion that you're remorseful and you want to serve God and you're so, you're, you hate to sin so bad, you, you, you start crying out to the Lord for help. It ain't about uh, uh, living back to your old life and not getting in the word of God and thinking that you are God. You ain't even learning nothing of God. Nothing about your life says, I am of God. And yet you calling yourself children of God. You need to call yourself what you were doing out there. Children of the devil. I play one, I play, I play on the field for the devil, and I play on the field for God. In my mind, I think that's right. No. There's only one way. There's no half, or oh, I'm on half on this team, I'm half on that team. That's impossible. You either serving God fully or you're serving the devil fully. Alright? Um you can't serve both masters, as one scripture says. Uh Another thing I'm seeing, I, I'm not liking. Listen, man, the church need to wake up. I ain't here to cut your sins, hit you with some flattering words, like uh, 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 as Brother Paul said. Uh, he didn't go around flattering people with words and encouragement. And, and I mean, uh, uh, oh man, you're doing a great job out there sinning, man. You just, man, you just don't worry about it. We <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you, we all are out here sinning, so. You're a fool. You're a fool listening to these devil's people and these people that got different doctrines. Different doctrines than what the apostles and Christ had. You're following devils. You don't even know it. Why? You don't know the word of God. Then you want to give your uh, beg, uh, people begging for money out on there. Oh, I need tithe. I need this for that. I need this. And y'all giving it to them. These people are living. Uh, I heard a guy yesterday talking about he living of donations of the church I ain't heard nothing so much shameful in my life shame go get go, you tell that person you tell that evangelist you tell that pastor to go get a job and stop living off the people of, uh, uh, that's poor living off uh, 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 the people of God ain't nothing in the New Testament to where it says you got to keep tithing like you did in the Old Testament nothing God in fact Paul said, I will not be chargeable to no man. Uh, uh, the apostles sold everything they had and distributed to the poor as Christ from, uh, uh, told them to and go out there and preach the word to trust in him. No trust. And y'all supporting this stuff because you like what they say. Bet you don't like what I say. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. I'm not here for money. I'm not motivated by money. I'm not here to be told to, to pat you on the back, talking about, yeah, you're doing a good job. You ain't doing no good job if you ain't stop sinning. That's just the reality of the situation. And you need to get right with God before God takes your life. That's real love. People add me and say, well, Kurt, you know, um, can you preach more about love and the lovey-dovey stuff and all this? Yeah, You can get that from every other preacher in this world. In fact, I got a whole sermon on love. If you, if you need that. We love you. But love does, love warns. Love tells you the truth. Love tells you, hey, listen, that's wrong. Stop it. Because we love you. And we say, and, 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 listen, man, if you don't make it to heaven because of me, because of, uh, uh, um, and, and, and I'm over here ministering to you, listen, that stuff don't play with me. I mean, I, I don't play with that stuff. I don't play with that stuff, man. Listen, you ain't going to make it to heaven. Uh, 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 because of me And I'm going to see you And, and God going to look at me and say well, why, why? This is your people Why didn't you keep going I mean what, what's going on That ain't going to happen with me on judgment day We going to get right Or we going to find a new, new, uh, a new church We need to live right for God We live holy We living for God Do you make a mistake Do I get rid No still going to be there for you forever. But if we can't have this type of lukewarmness in the church, this needs to get up out of there. This needs to get up out of the church, man. This, oh, I'm going to play church one day. I'm going to be uh, hateful the next day. Or I'm going to do the wrong things in life. Again, I don't care about none of this follower stuff. I don't care about none of this stuff. If you ain't making it to heaven, I didn't did my job wrong. 
But how you get to get to heaven? I lay out the four steps every single day. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent for your sins. Not live in your sins. Repent for your sins. Be sorrowful for your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to inherit the kingdom of uh, uh, the, the spirit of Christ. Right? Inherit the spirit of Christ. Without the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. And what does the spirit of Christ do? Obeys God. Turns from sin. Doesn't live in sin. And yet some of y'all are so weak that y'all don't want to ask God for help. You want to go to where the church is saying, oh, you're doing a good job. Man, you're just so awesome. You're out there sinning. Oh, no. you mean you wasn't in your word of God this week? Don't worry. It's not a big deal. You mean you didn't repent for your sins that you, that you committed? Man. You know, I read about all the Old Testament stories and everything that went on with the Word of God. And man, they're always about the wrath of God, man. It's always about how God is waiting for His people to come back. And, and He cast them out, out of Israel, took them in slavery, did all these things to try to, uh, uh, gave them pestilence, gave them famines that you're getting now. All these things that you're getting, food shortages, diseases, sword killings. And we still not listening to God. God is crying out for us to turn back to Him. And we still not listening. The heat that's coming upon this. It ain't it's been the hottest month in June in Houston ever. People are dying. I just read in New York it's 100 degrees. Same as same temperature as Houston. That ain't normal. Humidity up there. There ain't no humidity up there up north. Fires burning everything. Burning around the thing. Lakes drying up. There's going to be a water shortage pretty soon, y'all. Lakes drying up. That houses over there at the Hoover Dame, Lake Mead, Lake uh, whatever it is over there. All them lakes and rivers, the Colorado River is drying up as we speak. It's at the lowest levels it's ever been. It has stopped raining. And y'all still now heating the warning. Thinking you're living your daily life, living with your family, your kids, this, that, all this other stuff. Everybody's more important than God. Even your church is more important than God. Had a guy look at me the other day, sent something to my message talking about, stop sending me these things, these Word of God studies. Well, he didn't say it like that. He just said, why don't you wait till I get to a home and stop, and, and when I'm working, why don't you do it on my time? Who the hell are you? I send the Word of God studies to everyone so they can get right with God. Did you think you are special? Um, and then he want to say, Stop trying to uh, bring fear in people about the end times. We're not in the end times. It's deceptive. What? What are you talking about? Are you not reading your word of God? We are living in the end times and things are getting worse. More diseases God's sending out there that y'all don't even know about because you live in America. Where they hide things. They lie to us. The president of the United States is a natural lying devil. Every word that he talks about that you think is true, it's a lie. It's getting worse. Ain't no climate change that they tell you. Or when in my day it was called global warming. They read the Bibles. They know what they, they know what it says. God going to burn up the whole earth. Every scientist know that. Well, guess what's going on? God is burning up the whole earth. Killing animals. Killing fishes. Tornadoes everywhere. I read in the word of God the other day. I didn't even know it was this. Whirlwind. Whirlwind are tornadoes. 
and them tornadoes are going all over the world, destroying people, houses, crops, uh, 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 grasshoppers are doing the same thing. All these things is happening right in front of your eyes, and you still, still focus on the uh, 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 the things of the world. But God got to send another pandemic. God got to send, send uh, some more killing. God got to send some more uh, 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 food shortages for you to get it. What about the water shortage? Don't you know in about one or two years when them lakes dry up, there's going to be 40 to 50 million people without water? Energy, because energy comes from water as well. The biggest lake reservoir is in United States is drying up. Look it up. And not only that, it's happening all over the world. My daddy went down to a, a, the place where they go, uh, 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 what is it, uh, where they tubing and all the other stuff going down the river. Well, it shut down because the river then drew, uh, dried up. The river's dried up, but we can't do it no more. And y'all still are not seeing the signs of God. Y'all are still living for the devil, living for... Uh, uh, and and, and y'all in these cults. You're in these cults. Being led straight to hell. Leading you away from the word of God. Look at Revel I, I, I beg you to read Revelation chapter 16 through 18 chapter and see the plagues that are happening as we are speaking. Revelation 8. Read it. Read it. What do you at? Well, you read your, uh, your your baseball and your football and your basketball all day. You read all those other things. You read what's going on with the news. You read on what's going on with the president. But you ain't reading about the word of God. Some real knowledge and wisdom. You let somebody take you away from the word of God. And a lot of these places are churches. Stunting your growth. There's more and more things you need to learn in the word of God. I don't need no man to teach me nothing. Get in the word of God. It's here for a reason. I don't trust no one. Man, this is crazy. The times we live in. All right, so let's get into this. Faith without works. But those are things I needed to address. Um, I think we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go there. Don't go there, Kirk. You got to go into your word. I stay in this word, man. All day, every day, man. We got to, man. Sometimes I take breaks and stuff like that. And go do something else. Play with the dog or something else. Whatever it is. But I know what times we are living in. I know I ain't got much time. I'm out there. Man, let me tell you something. I'm out there praying at night. Circling around my house. Praying to the Lord at night. Praying that these plagues escape me during the times that is coming. And some of y'all not even praying to God. You think because you in a church and you pray, you out there in a vain or a prideful prayer. Thinking that you're getting closer to God. When one scripture says that God is not even in the building anymore. Is two or three gathered in his name? Is he in the midst? Absolutely. But how many of them people in your church are of God? How many of those people are really living what they're preaching or what they're believing in when they leave church? You could be congregating with devils. You could be congregating with people that um, you don't know what people are doing behind closed doors. Very important for y'all to understand that. One scripture says, save yourself. No, none of your friends are going to be there on judgment day. Not your wife, not your husband, not your kids. And yet you're still playing around with God. Faith without works is dead being alone. If you are not obeying God, you are not of God. You are not of God. 
Get that through your thick skull. And God going to cast you right into hell. Everyone thinks that you can play with God. You are a fool for thinking that. You will never escape the a wrath of God. You will never escape death. It's coming to everyone. And then when that body goes back to the grave, the spirit returns back to God, and it says that all men, are, uh, 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 all everyone, will be judged on what they did. Everyone gonna be judged on everything they did wrong. That's why it's so important to repent. You going through your whole life sinning against God and not even repenting for it because of your pride. God going to cast your pride into hell. A, that same loving, merciful, long-suffering of God that doesn't want anyone to perish but to all come to repentance will cast your Christian butt to hell. Man, there's 50% of Christians obeying God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go even further. I'm going to say this is only an estimate. 50 to 70% Christians disobeying God, calling themselves people of God, and maybe 25, 15%. I would even go more than less than 10% people. Which one? You think God is, is, is just going to overlook that? The disobedience? You didn't put your faith to works? You didn't obey God? Christ said... And John chapter, I believe it's uh, John chapter 15 verse 14. He says, this is Jesus. Ye are my friends if you do whatever I command you. So if you don't do what he commands and you disobey God and you do a daily life of disobedience, saying you're a Christian, You ain't of no God. You're lying to yourself. And on that day, on that day of judgment, because it says that all is appointed unto men to die, then comes the judgment. And some of y'all not ready for judgment. Y'all not ready for the judgment of God. In fact, I'm scared of the judgment of God. And I'm going to turn from my sin. And some of y'all don't even have that fear. You don't have that fear of God in you. Again, we did a whole ser sermon on uh, 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 fear of God. Because many people are losing the fear of God. And when they lose their fear of God, they just do whatever they want to do. And say that God loves me regardless. You're a fool. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, even Christ even said, why do you call me Lord and you don't do the things that I say? He letting you know, don't call, why are you calling me Lord and you're not doing the things that I say? God said, uh, uh, one scripture says that God don't even hear the prayers of sinners. The ones disobeying God. And excuse me, I'm going to be drinking a lot. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The word of God uh, spoke things into existence. Imagine if he didn't speak things and he just thought things. You got to put your faith to work. So that, the, uh, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now this whole chapter of Hebrews chapter 11 is talking about faith. We went over in James chapter 2 with faith without works is dead. But we're going to show you the uh, how these people obeyed God, right? And I, I, I want to go into Jasher too about Abraham and what he went through. All right, so we're in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. Hey, you need to stop. Come here. Come here. He wants to be the star of the show. Say hi. Say hi to everyone. You keep, you keep wanting to get attention. Yeah, you didn't want to get attention to so much. Say hi. Oh, uh, you so fresh, yeah. Go. 
Ah, uh, stop. Hey, hey. Stop it. You gotta go outside. Hold on. Back to what we said. He just stared at me until he ready to go outside. Um, and start jumping in the air. Uh, the world was framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. So it wasn't just by his faith. He had to do what was right in the eyes of God, meaning he worked. He worked for uh, uh, <coughs> to get food for God for a sacrifice, right? While Cain, he just picked up things off the ground and brought it to God. But God honored what Abel did, and then like what, and then and then care for what Cain was doing, and Cain became jealous, but. Uh, Abel had to put his faith to work. He had to work hard for God, right? Testifying of the gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, meaning he was moved from one place. In Jasher, it goes all in detail to where Enoch happened. He went straight to heaven. He went straight to heaven. He didn't. He didn't see death. And this is what this scripture said. If you ever get a chance, make sure you check out Jasher because it is the uh, it brings the uh, the puzzle all together. It fit, it's a finished product. I read the book of Jasher. It lines up with the word of God. And not only that, the book of Jasher is mentioned uh, uh, twice in the Old Testament to look for. All right. Um, uh, but it, it completes Exodus and it also completes Genesis. All right. Uh, so Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him by faith Noah being warned of God uh, uh, warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear so Noah had to put his faith to work he had to build the ark and get the animals on there uh, uh, something some uh, many many years he worked warned the people I think it was 110 years um but don't quote me moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house all right Prepare the ark. So he had to put his faith to works. By that, by the which of the condemned the world. And became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go in, out unto a place. Which he should after receive for an inheritance. Obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. Do you see how faith has got to put to obedience? He went when God told him to go into the land. He went into it. Uh, when 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 God told him to put his uh, son on the altar, he obeyed God. All right. It says by faith he sojourned in the land of promise. He believed God, so he went in a uh, journey all into the uh, promised land, into the strange country, dwelling in the tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him. Of the same promise. Matter of fact, we're going to go into this. We're going to go into what? All the all the devil deceiving that uh, Abraham had to go through with, uh, uh, with the devil. When he was trying to sacrifice his son as God commanded him to do. Imagine if he just went off faith. Of, faith of, uh, uh, he just had faith and didn't do, it, do what God told him to do. Uh, do you not remember the story of Jonah where he went against God? He believed he believed it, but he was there. Nah, I ain't doing that. And guess what happened? They uh, uh, they threw him off the ship in a, in a whale, uh, a fish, a big fish, ate his body. 
and swallowed him. Stayed in there three days and three nights to get yourself together. Uh, hold on one second, I gotta look for it. All right, so we're in Jasher chapter 23. If you ain't got that in your in your word of God, uh, Google it, because we need to show you the whole story of Abraham, which the devil's trying to take out, right? All right, so we're in Jasher chapter 23, and pay attention to how the devil works. Jasher chapter 23. Abraham just couldn't put his, uh, use faith. He had to put his faith to obedience, works. Uh, verse 20, and Abraham went with Isaac, his son, to bring him up as an offering before the Lord. Hold on. Uh, Abraham went with Isaac, his son, to bring him up as an offering before the Lord, as he had commanded him. All right. Verse 21, and Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael, the son of Hagar. And Eliezer, 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 I think that's how you say it, his servant. And they went together with them. And while they were walking in the road, the young man spoke these words to themselves. And Ishmael said to Eliezer, now my father Abraham has gone with Isaac to bring him up for a burnt offering to the Lord as he commanded him. Now when he had returned, he will give unto me all that he possessed to inherit and inherit after him for I am the firstborn so now they trying to they thinking about all the killing that uh, Abraham gonna do they gonna try to get his stuff uh, the inheritance of, of his brother Isaac which was the chosen one by God all right um, let's keep going down all right verse 25 when Jasher chapter 23 verse 25 Google it and while Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man. So an old man. Guess what this old man was that the devil came into him as? Humble and a, of a contrite spirit, meaning a, a, a humble spirit. And he approached Abraham. So all the ones that tell you that, well, the devil's this, the devil's that, well, the devil can turn into an angel of light at any time. The devil can turn into a humble man at any time. Well, so you say, why did he turn into an old man? Well, old men have a lot of knowledge. And a lot of people listen to older people. So just to show you how smart the devil is and how manipulating the devil is. Uh, very humble at the end, contrite spirit, and approach Abraham and say unto him, this is what the devil said to Abraham. Art thou silly and brutish that thou goest to do this thing this day to thy only son? God told him to do this. Put your, go get, uh, 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 obey me. Take your son and offer him up a sacrifice to me. Here come the devil. I'm just, as an old, humble spirit, humble man. Aren't thou silly and brutish that thou goest to do this day? Uh, 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 goest thou, uh, I'm sorry, that thou goest to do this, this, uh, uh, I'm but thou goest to do this thing this day to thy only son? You want to go kill your only son? Here's how the devil come and make you do the wrong things in life. Some of these people are your friends. Some of these people are your family members. Some of y'all are so caught in the devil's trap that you don't even recognize who is of the devil and who isn't. Because you use your love and your feelings and your emotions over what God told you to do. So you compromise the word of God for your feelings. And women are very subjected to that. Because they, and this is why a woman shouldn't be preaching or teaching God's word. Because they will use emotions. They will use feelings, what I feel, instead of what God actually said. In fact... Sarah's saying, telling Abraham, don't do this. 
Don't you dare. Don't. No, 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 no. There's got to be some other way. I don't want to give up my son. She weeping to Abraham. Abraham said, no, we got to do this. Well, God said to do this. I got to obey God. This is a man of the house. Uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord, meaning he was the authority figure of him. He had the final say in what goes on. And some of you weak men would rather compromise for your wives and compromise for your women and your children than serving God and putting your foot down. Hey, makeup's wrong. You're not going to put that on. Hey, young daughter, you're not going to put on a uh, uh, half-naked stuff showing off your breasts and your butts to men with perverts out here. No. Oh, well, she, uh, my daughter wants this. She wants to wear I don't care what your daughter wants to wear. You better obey God. You better have more respect for God than you got for your, uh, uh, than yourself. Feelings and emotions. Never mind, God said that you do man-made traditions, putting on bathing suits that, sh that are just underwear for your, for your daughter. That's wrong. God commands that's wrong. God said a woman should not enhance her outer appearance. Nor should they dress immodestly. That's a man household decision. God says this. Uh, you say that. We're going to go with God. Well, you know, he's, yeah, you're being too legalistic. What? You mean obeying God is called legalistic? Sign me up for it. Legalistic is when someone adds on to the word of God. And, and makes it into something that, uh, like a man that tells you that you can't wear shorts in a, in a, in a, uh, 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 as a man. There's no scripture in the world that says that. Um, that you got to have on a suit and tie or you can't come into the church. Or you can't be of this congregation. That's a person adding on to the word of God. Say you can't wear sandals in, in the church. Ain't no scripture that says that. You adding on to the word of God. You making it harder for people to get to heaven. And not only that, you pushing people away. That's legalistic. God said to dress modestly and, and makeup. And the only person that wore makeup was uh, Jezebel. Telling you uh, uh, and, and pushing the lipstick. You got your boobs and breasts all out. You know, showing your cleavage. You know. Doing the wrong things in life. You're doing the opposite of what God told you to do. Stop putting your feelings and emotions and, and, and pushing it over God's word. You got to obey God. Don't let somebody try to push you away from obeying God. Let me tell you something. That person's of the devil. That person ain't working for God. If he's telling you to do something, they go again, or he says something is all right, and God say the opposite of that. Don't follow these people to hell. So, came to him as a humble man. All right, so here we go. So, does the devil stop there with all the temptations and stuff like that to try to stop you from obeying God? No. If he can't get you one way, he's going to get you the other way. Guess what he tries to do with this one? We're in Joshua 23, verse 26. For God gave thee a son in thy later days and in thy old age. And wilt thou go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And wilt thou cause the soul of thy only son to perish from the earth? Here is the devil trying to trick Abraham. God told him to do this. Whether it's in the word or whether it's through speech. And God ain't going to contradict his word. That's how you know if it's his speech or not. He'll speak through his word. So he tell him, oh, I gave you a son. I mean, God gave you a son. Why would you go put him on the altar? You know, you don't need to obey God. You can just have your faith. You don't have to do all this stuff. That's a lie from Satan himself. It's a lie from hell. God told you to do something. You do it. You don't ask questions. You don't say, well, I don't know what this means. And I, God ain't the author of confusion. You know what's right and what's wrong at the end of the day. You know that sleeping with another woman is wrong. You know that divorce and remarriage is wrong. You know that uh, uh, drinking, smoking, uh, doing all the sins in the world is wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. You know that a man in a dress is wrong. You know a woman that wears a man's attire is wrong. 
You know it's wrong, and you still do it anyway. Faith without works, obedience is dead, being alone. So, here's the devil. Oh, he done got to obey God, Abraham, stop it. I'm telling you what's right. You see how the devil tries to use a little bit of truth because we should, thou should not murder. And if you, anybody knows the story, the angel said, God, he's about to do it. God stopped everything. Oh, I see the faith of you, uh, Abraham. And it was rewarded to him. And you see that in James chapter 2. All right. Verse 27, Joshua 23, uh, 27. Does thou knowest, uh, th doesn't thou know, not know and understand that this cannot be from the Lord? How many of your pastors say you that? Don't you know that uh, homosexuality, uh, uh, God's got to love them. He's not going to cast them into hell. Satan. Satan go against God's word. That's when you jump up out of there. Don't you know? Don't you know that 50% of people are divorced and remarried? You can go get you another wife. Look at the Old Testament, what they did in the days of Moses. God, God divorced his people. God, God didn't leave his people. He left them for a time and came right back to them. Because of their wickedness and their iniquity, he left. And punished them. But he came back. Did not Jesus come from Jerusalem? Does thou not know this is a devil? Does not doesn't thou not know and understand that the things cannot be from the Lord? For the Lord cannot do unto men such evil. God creates uh, uh, evil and He creates good. God, our God, does all these things. I remember Saul, God taking his spirit out and putting an evil spirit in him. What happened to Judas? He was saved. He was an apostle. And yet still fell. He fell. How did he fail? Through sin. Not, and when uh, he failed, God told, I mean, Jesus knew what he was going to do in, in the beginning. It was foretold. Um, but he knew who it was from the beginning. And yet he still made him apostle. Right? Listen to the devil. For the Lord cannot do unto men such evil upon earth to him to, to, to say to him. It's the devil trying to t stop somebody from obeying God. Go yeah. He's not going to. For the Lord cannot do unto men such evil upon earth to say to him, Go slaughter thy child. The devil playing on your flesh. How many times have we been wanting to obey God, but then the devil plays on your flesh and stops it from doing something? Your fleshly and worldly desires that you want to attain and do. You fail for the manipulation of the devil. You fail away from God because of your fleshly desires. And the devil's only pushing them on. You can't make your sin. Let me understand. Let me make this very clear to everyone. The devil can't make anyone sin. He can push these thoughts and he can push this temptation upon you. But at the end of the day, you make the choice whether to serve God or serve the devil. And if you serve the devil, you serve the sin. So here's the hit. Don't do that, Abraham. You know that's wrong. Some of y'all got your women in your ear. Oh, don't spank him. You know that's wrong. Yeah, God told you you got to beat, beat the child uh, if he do something wrong to save his life. Don't judge us. You, the, dog, the devil is calm and collected. Humble, as, one, as we were just reading with the old man that came to him by way of the devil. To stop Abraham from obeying God, putting his faith to works, right? So we in a, a 
uh, verse 28. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan who, in, who in, endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. He knew it because why? It went against God. And anything that goes against God is Satan. Whether it's your friends, your family members, don't let someone push you away from obeying God. And if that's the case, you chose that. Don't blame nobody but yourself. Don't blame God. I heard a woman curse God the other day. I thought it was all right. I thought when well, I was going through a hard time, so I cursed. You foolish woman. That's blaspheming of the Holy Ghost. The creator of, and, and you think that God is not going to punish you for that? You a fool. Never in my life, if I was going through the hardest struggles that Job did, I would never curse God. And that's the difference between a real man of God and a, and a woman of God and a fake Christian. A lukewarm Christian as I call him. Oh, as God calls him. And Abraham heard this and knew it was the word of Satan who, in, who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. But Abraham was not hearken unto that voice of Satan. No, 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 no. And, re, and Abraham rebuked him so that he went away. Don't you know that Peter, apostle, Satan entered Peter and started to rebuke the Lord Jesus Christ? Don't you know that uh, uh, Christ turned around, looked him in the eye, said, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written. Don't tell me that Satan can't enter somebody, man. If you're sin, if you are committing the sin, you are allowing the devil into your temple, which is the body. And Satan returned, so he didn't stop. Oh, no, when, when Abraham rebuked him, he didn't stop. Some of y'all going through that now. Where your, your friend told you this, and their friend couldn't get to you, so what the devil going to do? He's going to try to go through your father, or your mother, or your wife, or your husband, or even your children. Because look what's going to happen here. You can see why I got, uh, the devil would try to take Jasher out because it shows you how he works. And let me tell you something about me. I pay attention to my enemy. I want to know how he operates and works so that we can see it and get it up out of here. And Satan returned. Oh, he didn't stop. Just like he didn't stop with Jesus. He didn't stop on, that, uh, uh, on the mount uh, when, when Jesus was fasting 40 days, and, uh, 40 days and 40 nights. And the temptations, oh no, he came right back with Judas, then with Peter, then with the mob. Satan don't quit. All right, uh, so uh, Satan returned and came to Isaac, the son, the little kid at probably this time. Doesn't tell us the, the, the right amount of age, but it's really, he's real young. And he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, calmly, meaning humble and well favored. So he not only did he stop, not when Abraham went away from Aaron, but notice when he rebuked him, he left him, right? He had to. If you rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ, all devils got to go. Now, the, the devil don't have to listen to you if you ain't obeying God. He got a right, a, a right to uh, uh, bother you. A right to tempt you all day. A right to live in your home. Some of y'all are putting the devil into your household by bringing beer, smoke, cur people in your house cursing, all this other stuff. Allowing the devil into your household. And you say, well, well, I don't know what's going on in my household. I can tell you what's going on. Get that alcohol at your house. Get them cigarettes. Get all them porn videos at your house. Get all that stuff out your house. That's what's that's where the Satan living. Yes, always call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, whenever you get a bad thought that's about to materialize, let me tell you something. I call upon the name of Jesus Christ, and that thought is gone. 
they don't even they don't even get to the stage two or three. You know what I'm saying? Take the clothes off, this, that, and all this other stuff. Because that's how the devil gonna try to get to you. Another way, if he can't get you to in the flesh, he gonna try to get your thoughts. Because one scripture says that the thoughts, uh, the thoughts of, of uh, thoughts of foolishness is sin. All right, so uh, uh, so he's back at the child. He's at Isaac now. Since he can't get Abraham, he's going to Isaac. And he appeared unto Isaac in a figure of a young and calm, a young man, calmly. Oh yeah, he was. He was a uh, 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 patient. He was, oh, yeah, look, you see? And, and y'all been told that the devil comes at you angry and with a loud voice and that pride and all the other. Ain't that devil work? Devil deceiving y'all. So, he says to Isaac, and he approached Isaac and said to him, the devil, Doest thou not know and understand that thy old silly father bringeth thee to slaughter these days for not nothing? I just can't tell you how many people just hate me and will try to push anybody they can away from me. And guess what that is? You working under Satan. Because we trying to get these people to heaven. We trying to give them the word of God. Trying to get them more knowledgeable and, and, and more wisdom with God's word. And yet you pushing them away from us. You, are, you working for Satan. You ain't working for God. What, God out there uh, uh, pushing the brothers away from each other and all this other stuff? That ain't how, that ain't how God works. You working for Satan. Um, and he approached Isaac and said, Do thou not know that the old silly father bringeth thee to slaughter this day for not? Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him. Oh, that devil was something else. For he is a silly old man. And let not this precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. <clears throat> and Isaac heard this and said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard my father that which this man spoken has spoken? Even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered his son Isaac and said to him, Take heed of him and do not listen to his word. Nor attend to him. For he is Satan. Yeah, you're going to tell me I can't call somebody Satan. For he is Satan, endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commands of God. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went for them. Did he stop there with the coming as a little kid and humble one to talk to the Isaac? No. Did he stop there when he uh, talked to the, uh, the old man came to him? As a humble and contrite spirit to uh, 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 to Abraham? No, he couldn't get him there. Guess what he's going to do now? And Satan went from them, seeing he could not prevail over them. He hid himself from them. And he went and passed before them in the road. And he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. You see the type of power that Satan has? And Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place. The devil turned into a snake, did he not? The devil can turn into a dragon. The devil can turn into an angel of light to deceive you. <laughs> Some of y'all admit y'all are so lost when it comes to the devil and how he does things. And Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place. And they saw a brook large and powerful of, of, of oops, I think I went over there. Oh, I'm sorry. Transforms into a brook in the road. And Abraham, Isaac, and his two young men reached that place. And they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters. And they entered the brook and passed through it. And the waters at first reached their legs. And they went deeper in the brook. And the waters reached up to their necks. And they were terrified on account of the water. And, wh and while there, they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place. And he knew that there was no water there before. He said, well, wait a minute. There wasn't no water here before. This must be Satan. Some of y'all trying to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And a whole bunch of things happen. Whether your car break down, your mommy and daddy yelling at you, or your wife or husband yelling at you, or the kids get sick. That's Satan to try to stop you from doing and obeying God. And yet y'all stand to that. 
Y'all would rather let problems and sacrifices and things of the world steer you away from obeying God. Yes, scripture says faith without works, obedience is dead, being alone. Your faith don't mean nothing without obedience. One scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants obedience. That's how you know you're his. Again, I don't care how many tongues you done spoke in, how many uh, devils you done cast it out, uh, how many uh, uh, prophecies you done laid out in this world that came true. I'm here to tell you, you are not of God if you are not obeying God. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You don't have Christ's Spirit with you. And this is the deception the devil is playing on y'all. I see it. I sit back and I just pay attention. And I wait for God to speak. I analyze things. I don't just make moves. Analyze it. What's going on? What's the intent that the devil's trying to do here? What's his trick and scheme here? Right? Pay attention to that. How is the devil getting me in sin every single time? What is he doing? Well, he's pushing a fleshly desire for you to disobey God. And it's pushing on you till you give in to the temptation. And now you're stuck in this sin and you can't get out. You have allowed the devil. And the only way to get out of the devil is through prayer. Asking and begging God for deliverance. Jesus, I need help. This smoking cigarette is going to lead me to hell. I know it. And I'm crying out to the Lord for help. Desperate. Only when a man hits his lowest moment, or a woman hits her lowest moment, she will cry out to the Lord. Or he will cry out to the Lord for help. But some of y'all are so prideful and so devilish that you won't even do that. And won't even repent for your sins. And you just let the devil win every single time. Everyone needs a Savior. You, I needed a Savior. Or I was on the way to hell. And I don't ever want to get so prideful to where I, I don't need help from God. So back to what we were talking about. He came as a brook of water. And Abraham said unto Isaac, I know this place in which we're, there was no brook. No water. Now therefore it is Satan who does all this to us. And draws us this day from the commands of God. And Abraham rebuked him and said unto him. The Lord rebuke thee O Satan. Be gone from us. For we go by the commands of God. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham. And he went away from them. And the place again. So you do see how the name of God. And rebuking Satan. How when you got Christ with you. How devils got to be. Uh, under subjection and fearful of you because you've got Christ living in you. And some of y'all don't believe that. But don't just think he stopped there. No, 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 no. Uh, he did other many other things. Uh, and, and it's, your, it's your job to get in this book and read it. Right? I can, show, I can lead a horse to water, but I sure can't make the horse drink the water. But you need to start putting in some work yourself. Why you got to always go to me to get to work? What if I die tomorrow? Then what? Right? So, uh, but he didn't stop there, the devil, if, if you're learning this story. He went to Sarah, and Sarah got all hysterical, and my son is dead, and all this other stuff, and Abraham's dead, and, and the devil convinced her, and she went and uh, 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 committed suicide. Oh, I, for, I forget. Don't, don't let me say that. I have to see it for you. Oh, hold on. I don't want to say that and be wrong. I fear the Lord. Um, so uh, it, it appeared, Satan appeared to Sarah as an old man, humble meat.
and she cast dust upon her head and she said, Oh, my son Isaac, oh, that I had this day died of thee. She was wishing that she died before her son. And she continued to weep and said, It grieves for me, oh, my son, oh, my Isaac, oh, my, that I died in this day instead. And I continued to weep and grieved for me after I uh, reared thee and have brought thee up. And the joy turned into mourning over thee, and, I, and that I had a longing for thee, and cried and prayed to God that I might bear thee at ninety years old, and now hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with my son and his being of the word of the Lord, and thou perform, perform the command of God, for, yet, for who can transgress the word of our God? Uh, who can sin against our God? In whose hands are the souls of every living creature? She's weeping. She was going down the road, and she came with her maid servant, servant to Kishabir, Karitaba, Karitaba, which is in Hebron, and she asked concerning her son, and she remained there while she was sent some. So the Satan had her so worried, she went looking for her son. And Satan, and behold, in verse eighty, um, in verse eighty-six. And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her and said unto her, I spoke falsely unto thee. We're probably laughing and giggling. For Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard that word, her joy was exceedingly violent on her account. So she probably went shaking around, happy, and all this other stuff. That her soul went out through joy. She died and was gathered to her people. So the devil tricked her and got and she died in her. So you ever this is how Sarah died when she learned that her son did not die, that her son did not get sacrificed, and that the devil lied to her. The devil just loves to go after women. I'm telling you what, man. And he he is just like Eve. And and he tricks them, man. Getting into your head. Oh, my man is cheating on me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You done had a dream about your man cheating now, all of a sudden it's from God. That's from Satan. Oh, I need to go divorce my I need to go divorce my husband and, and I take all my kids. I got all this stuff. That's the devil out of here tricking you. You gotta recognize the devil. Women need to be very, very careful. So back, we're back in the Hebrews chapter eleven. Alright, so we are in verse ten. For he looked for a city which had foundation, which whose buildeth and maker is God. Through faith. Also, Sarah her, her, herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful uh, uh, who had promised. There sprang there even of one in him as a good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which by the seashore is innumerable. Verse 13, these all died in faith. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that there were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from, went, from where they come out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they have desired a better country that is in heavenly. So our home is in heaven. We desire to do that. And we desire to obey God. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. By, Ab by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. So he had, again, we went over that whole story how uh, faith without works is dead. He had to put his faith to works. He had to put his son on the altar. And he had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from him, where also he received him as a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Uh, so by faith, he had to put that to work because uh, it was the birthright for the first son to get the get the uh, the, the, the birthrights, and it was uh, Esau that was born first. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped. And leaning upon the top of his staff. So he had to put that faith to work. Hey, listen, you can't just have faith in it. 
Oh, I believe God. No, he had to bless them with the staff, put it over thing. Bam. Faith without works. You got to be obedient to God. Um, staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. So he had to put his faith to work. He had to get everybody ready for him that he was going to die and that he was supposed to be buried at this certain spot and place and to get everyone ready uh, uh, for the next coming of who was to uh, lead the people. And this happens throughout the whole scriptures from Moses. To, and we're going to get right into it now. By faith, Moses, when he was born, hid three months of his parents because they, she saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. So they had believed that, you know, this was a child of God. This was a person of God. And they hid him. They had the obedience. Same thing with Rahab, where she hid the servants of God. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Because why? God was leading them. By faith, Moses, when he was coming to the years, refused to be called the Pharaoh's daughter. Why, why, why did Moses refuse to be called the Pharaoh's daughter? Because he refused to keep serving sin and the pleasures of being in the kingdom as a prince, as a high ruler in that area, as the Pharaoh's son, right? Choosing rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. So, Moses had to put his faith to works and leave that area which was not of God. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Notice it says Christ and not God here. Yet Christ didn't come into the New Testament. Yet Moses in the Old Testament. For he had respect unto the uh, repayment of the reward. So he had respect and obedience to God. When you fear the Lord and you got respect for God, you ain't going to be out there sinning. By faith, he forsook Egypt. So he, he believed that this place was evil, but he forsook it. So he had to put his faith to acts again, to works, to obedience. Through faith, uh, I'm sorry, uh, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as sin who... He, him who is invisible. Well, what's it talking about? Who him is invisible? God is an invisible spirit. He believed in the invisible spirit of God and did his. Uh, uh, he left that place, forsake it, and went into the uh, uh, the wilderness. All right. The, through faith, he kept the Passover. All right. Through faith, so you believe in the Passover, but you're not partaking in the events. You're not showing the obedience of it. Right. And sprinkled, blood, sprinkled of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea, y'all. Did they, could they just had, just had to believe and that's it, you know, the, you know, because a lot of them, a lot of the script, one of the scriptures says they were terrified when they seen that. But they had to put their faith to work, meaning they had to cross that sea. They had to cross, God opened up the sea. And you just standing there looking. They were terrified, as one scripture says, of that. They didn't want to go through that. But they trusted God. And they put their faith to works. And now this story is a famous story that we all know. And they thought that the enemy was, they, they saw the enemy coming. They was like, oh, we're going to get killed anyway going through this thing. So they're halfway through it. But next thing you know, as they all out there, and then the water splashed down on the people. Right? They put their faith to work. They believed God. All right. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as a dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to be were drowned. So they were all drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. But so what, what did they have to do? They had to circle the, that thing the whole time. And they yelled at one time. And then, bam, that's when the, uh, the walls fell down. So uh, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were uh, uh, compassed, meaning to be circled around, going around, about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. Rahab was a whore that did uh, that was uh, doing the wrong things in life. They were Gentiles at that time, but God spared her because she believed in the Red Sea. She heard about the story, and she saw the men there. She was like, well, I, 
I believe that story. I believe your God. When she received the spies with peace. Verse 32. So she did. Hey, the spies are here. Take them and kill them. <coughs> Verse 32. And what shall we say? And, and some more uh, heroes of faith. And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon. I don't remember the story of Gideon. How God took away the men of his. Uh, uh, he had enough men to go and battle with these people. Yet God took them all the way down to 300. And the reason why God did that. To show the miracle of God. And Barak. Uh, as you. Uh, 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 and of Samson. And of Jethri. And of, of David also. And Samuel. And of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms. So they had to put their faith to works. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Worked righteousness. They had to work righteousness. They couldn't live. Devilish and living for sin. Obtained promises. Stopped the mouth of lions. What if Daniel uh, didn't uh, uh, say, you know, I'm going to just kill myself before I go in that of, uh, the den of lions. I'm just going to die. No, he had faith. And he had to put his faith to works. Obedience. Quench the violence of the fire. Escape the edge of the sword out of weakness and were made strong. Wax violent, meaning courage and fight. Turn to fight the uh, 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 fight the enemies and the aliens, uh, which are the uh, uh, illegal, illegal aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings. Oh, imagine if they didn't have to go through certain things to, to put their faith to test, as the apostles did. Went through cruel mockings and scourgings, whoopings, as Jesus and uh, uh, Paul and Peter had to go through. Yet moreover, uh, bonds and imprisonments, they were put in jail. Galatians, all these other uh, Colossians and little chapters that was written to the churches, he never even attended. But wrote to the churches. Said listen. I'm in prison. I'm locked up for Christ. But yet he still put his faith to works. They were stoned. Stephen was stoned to death for believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were sawn asunder. Were tempted. Were slain with the sword. And they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. Being destitute, not having anything. They didn't have anything. They didn't have anything. When you in jail, you ain't got nothing but water. And a couple underwears and shirts and pants. Food, and maybe sometimes. Sometimes you go through jail starving. They serve food at 5 and they don't serve it back to 7 a.m. in the morning. Back starting to hurt. Go help that back. Being a destitute, not having anything, afflicted, tormented, tormented for God's word. Right? Your faith going to go through things and troubles and afflictions of life. Don't let one trouble or affliction or any of that stuff stop you. From serving a holy God. You've got to put your faith to work. Imagine if Noah didn't build that ark. Imagine if Elijah didn't put his faith to work. When God told him to put water on the sacrifice. Making it harder to light on fire. Yet God came down with a tornado of fire. And, and made it. And, and, and showed. And even the stream he had to build around them. It was like a little river around the sacrifice as well. Gone. He put his faith to works. Obedience. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in the mountains and in dens and in the caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Well, why didn't they receive not the promise? <coughs> some of them didn't put their faith to works. Some of them died in their sins. Some of them went back to, like Judas and Saul. 
Don't ever let a man tell you you can't lose your salvation. He's a liar. You ain't. You don't know if you got your salvation or not. Don't let the people lie to you. Talking about, yeah, you saved, you're going to heaven. And you know you out there living a devilish life. You would believe that lie. Don't nobody, let me tell you, let me be real to you. And I've seen this with people I debate with. They have this cocky, prideful attitude that they are already in heaven. And they just going to pass through the judgment. Like they're special. Such a foolish generation of Christians. I call them fake Christians. Because they're not obeying God. They ain't put their faith to works. They don't even believe in faith and faith, uh, in, in obedience. They don't believe that. They don't believe you got to repent. They'll tell you that to your faith. They'll believe you don't get, need to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ going down in water. They don't even believe that Jesus Christ is God. They don't even know the name of God. I heard a man, Chris LaSala, or whatever his name was, I had a two-hour debate with this fool. And he talked about an amateur in the Word of God. That's one big amateur. And he tried to play like he know what he's talking about. Let me tell you something. I caught him in so many lives. All right? They got the debate. I ain't got it. I'm waiting for them to send it to me. We're probably never even going to see it again. Because they don't want that video getting out. But we caught him in so many lives. I mean, it's ridiculous. And we went over there in the exposing video here. You know. But the one thing I remember what I said, I said, I asked him, I said, what is the name of God? He said, Yahweh. So the name of God is God. Does that, I mean, is that about the foolish thing you ever heard? The name of God is God. The name of my father is Father. The name of my son right here is named Son. They don't even know who God is. God is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ. He said, I come in my Father's name. This fool tried to convince me that that's not what it meant. And that it, one scripture says, I have manifested thy name unto men. And it, it, he said, when you have seen the Father, you have seen me. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. One scripture says that we do all things, word or deed, in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks and glory to the Father, God, by Him. The name of the Father is Yahweh. That's a Hebrew name for God. Foolish. And y'all are following these people that have no Holy Spirit. That have no one. Once they've been confronted with a man of God. A man that has been shown things by God. They, are, they, they, they look ridiculous. And some of y'all see that with the base I do with some of these people. And it ain't, for, it, it ain't to make them look bad. It's to teach y'all at the same time how to deal with these people. And to show them uh, what they're uh, doing is wrong. But the first lot they get caught in. They get all mad and upset. They want to fight you. They want to over talk you. They want to do all this crazy stuff. That stuff don't phase me. In fact, some of them are going to try to get you to act out of character. That ain't going to work here. Yeah. I got the Spirit of Christ with me. You are not going to get me to act out of character for you. And y'all got to y'all got to take that too to heart. And, and to see that, that, hey, listen. You don't have to go to the dirt with that other person. You don't need to go rolling down in the mud with a pig. I don't need to get rolling around in the dirt with a pig to be a pig. Don't let that push you to be uh, in no those, in those sense. Do not let someone get to you. When someone has the ability to take your joy and to control you, they got you. They got you. I had an old man once time tell me that. I was young and dumb and, and foolish. Uh, and my boss was getting on my nerves all the time and uh, you know I didn't know how to handle it but he was just he knew how to get to me right my daddy to this day knows how to push my buttons but once I started realizing that he was pushing my buttons to get a reaction and that he couldn't get that reaction no more he stopped acting the way he did once they know they can't get you they get angry because they, they know they can't control you no more. I mean, he used to say things to me to get me to act act a fool. 
And your husband or wife or kids or whatever it is is going to say something to get you a reaction out of you. And to get you angry, to get you upset, get you to say something out of character. They got a control of you. A man that can't control himself when he is pushed in anger or he is pushed in a bad circumstance or through troubles and trials and tribulations. And he can't and he and he and he loses his cool. Or he panics. That man is not right with God. When I see somebody acting up, acting a fool and trying to get me to act out of character, I take three steps back. Meaning I my, my mind, I'm thinking before I'm reacting. What what what? Don't say that because don't let him get to you. Because you ever said something out of character and said something out of, out of anger that you regret? Well, that is the love of God and the patience of God to be able to control your spirit that dwells in you from acting in anger. When you will have Christ's spirit in you, that stuff will stop you from doing that. Now, if you was to make a mistake, you repent and say, I can't believe I said that, Lord, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, help me to control my mouth and my, my, my emotions and my anger. All right? Because homosexuality should, as someone that's practicing and doing homosexuality, should anger you and talking about the day of God. It should anger you. Christ was angered. Uh, he flipped tables and picked up a weapon on them. Right? He didn't hit them with it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, be angry and sin not. But the apostles was angry. I mean, I remember Paul was angry at uh, brother uh, Peter because he was showing respect of, of persons to other people. Uh, Jeremiah was angry. Uh, I've, re I'm, I've been reading this whole uh, month. Uh, trying to think who else. Uh, mm, there's a whole bunch of them. I just find them out. But uh, there's going to be time, uh, Elijah was uh, uh, angry. He mocked the people even, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, your God must be on vacation. He was angry at Ahab and uh, Jezebel. So, one scripture says that anger rests in the bosom of fools. Yes, that's true. Because if you're angry all the time, how, you ain't got the love of God. But if you was to be angry at a certain thing, there's nothing wrong with that if they're going against God's word. Of course you'd be angry at the at the uh at the problem there. At the sin, at the disobe disobedience of God. That's normal. Um But when you're just angry at everything, you just angry at the world, you just, you know, I hate the world, something ain't right with you. So that's why I say anger rests in the in, in the buzz of the fool. Um so but yeah, you would say, well that's a contradiction right now. No, it's not. You gotta, you gotta harmonize the word of God. You gotta learn what it says. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's keep reading. Verse thirty nine, and uh, we in Hebrews chapter eleven, verse thirty nine. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us. Oh yes, He did. Heaven, that they without us should not be made perfect. So without God, you cannot be made perfect. Without Christ's Spirit in you. And obeying obedience through God, faith without works is dead. Being alone, you're not gonna be having God, which and, you, and you're not, and you're gonna be doing things that go against God. So we got to get in that obedience part. Where's the obedience? You say you got faith, you say you believe in God, yet you go disobeying God. How could you really have faith in God? You don't have faith in God. You don't believe in God. You don't love God. You're not going to heaven without obedience. Because faith without obedience is dead being alone. As we learn in James, it's alone. It's gone. It don't, it don't, it's got no need. If all these stories in the Bible of these men of God that didn't put their faith to works, their obedience, there would be no story. There would be none of it.
So you got to start asking yourself. And we're going to do part three because I didn't even finish what I was wanting to say. I didn't know that Hebrews chapter 11 was going to be this long. So we're going to have to do part three. But I still got more to say and show you the works of God and how it makes us perfect in the being of being with Christ. And in order to make it to heaven, you got to be perfect. What you say, Kurt, no one is sinless that no duh. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So why are you trying to tell me I gotta turn from my sins if we're not all sinless? You're not Jesus. They, do you do you notice they make fun of you for the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of God of changing you? Christians make fun of you. And try to get you upset. And try to get you to go in their den of devils. Well, you must be out there smoking cigarettes or doing something. You must have cursed at somebody on the road today, didn't you? Uh, no. Some of us fear God and respect God and want to obey God and want to make it to heaven. We love God that much. But it ain't by us. Oh, no. Don't get that misconstrued. I ain't did nothing. It was Christ that delivered me. And through the Christ spirit, one can live holy. That's how one lives holy. What's, what's the one saying up here? I can't read. I'm getting old. I got to get glass. I can't see all that. Um, forgive me. Uh, send it through direct message. Uh, but yeah, we're going to end it for tonight. Today, listen, man. All that hooping and the hollering in church. All that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you ain't obeying God. And you ain't. Let me tell you something. You a father and you ain't taking care of your kids. And you in church. Pumping around. Making them feel good. Like you in the Joe Lowstein stuff. You're only being led to hell by Satan. It's another trick and scheme. Make you feel good. Encouragement, right? That's what you want. Encouraging you to go to hell. You're going to fall in hell and burn. You're going to ask yourself, I can't believe I just didn't get in the word of God. And, and you're going to be out throughout eternity. Throughout everlasting life in hell. Through torture. Going over everything you could have, should have, would have done. And yet I'm sitting here today telling you specifically. Telling you specifically. The ways of God. The ways to make it to heaven. And escape hell. These are the exact ways. And it's all Biblical. These ain't made up opinions. These ain't made up ideology. This ain't from my pastor. This is strictly from the word of God. Which you refuse to get into. You are the one sending yourself to hell. And you letting people lie to you. You listening to the wrong people in life. And you say, well, it's your tone, Kurt. It's the way you talking to me I don't like. Well, you would have hated Jesus. Oh, let me tell you something. You would have hated Paul and Peter and the apostles. They were bolder than me. They were more uh, 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 frightening. In fact, they used that tactic a lot. They didn't like that. They didn't like the word that Paul spoke. Paul said, one scripture says that, uh, 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 though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge and wisdom. So Paul was rude. But he was that way for a reason. That you get it. You say, Kurt, you too loud. You way too loud. One scripture said, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their sins. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. 
and cry out to them. That's wrong. You shouldn't do that. You should be more loving. You should do good. Man, you've been doing good today, haven't you? You're just a good boy. Want me to talk to you like a dog? Talk to you like you're not smart. Man, we got to get real. I wouldn't want nobody sitting there fooling me around. I don't like that stuff. Like I said, Paul didn't go around with flattering words. I don't want nobody lying to me just to make me feel good. I want the truth. I want to know what God said. I want to know what this word says. I want to know what God is trying to tell me and what leads to hell and what leads to heaven. What I need to stop doing. What I need to fix. What am I doing wrong, Lord? But y'all so stuck in your ways, your stubborn, foolish ways. You're not even crying out to the Lord for help. You letting these people lie to you and tell you, you're saved, you're going to heaven. They don't love you. They don't love you. Because love tells the truth and love saves. Love will do whatever it takes. To, uh, uh, to help you. So you say they have love. Because of the way they talk. And because of the way they. They they, uh, they Joel Osteen you. That's what I call it. Joel Osteen or somebody. Getting all emotional. Playing music in the background. Trying to play on your emotions. Like you in a Hollywood video. This ain't no game. This is real life. We got to obey God or the hell we going. And if somebody ain't going to tell you that, I will. Because that's real love. Love will get you to obey God or die trying. Or die trying. I will go out there in the middle of the devil uh, as Hosea, uh, Hosea did. And go get your wife. That's a harlot. God gave, uh, made him marry a harlot. Hosea could have said, why? You know what? Uh, I'm not doing that. But guess what he did? Hosea put his faith to works and believed God and listened to God and married that woman and had kids with a harlot. Who left him for another man uh, uh, to, to go out there. And he told her that she was going to do this and that. He's asking her, why you made me wear a harlot and all this other stuff? Well, they were doing the same thing to God. God made him feel what he felt. They were supposed to be of God. They were supposed to. That they were serving other gods. And it hurt God. That's why Hosea. Mary the harlot was told to marry a harlot because they were whoring after other gods and it hurt God. Idolatry, making graven images and putting things over God hurts God's heart. When you're putting your video game, your kids, your wife, your husband, your everything more important than God, your TV show, your radio show, that cursing and all that devil music that you're listening to. You're going to serve, uh, 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 you're going to, to some devil place that serves, uh, uh, that's a bar, a strip club. That's why he made Hosea marry that whorish wife to see what it felt like. It don't feel good. How many of y'all can be, when a woman cheats on you and whores around, can stay with that woman? He was commanded to. Yet God will leave us for a season. But will always make a way for us to come back. Y'all not hearing the cry of the Lord. Y'all not hearing what God got to say. 
Y'all not hearing the warnings of God that they are living in the end times. You still think you got time. The plagues are upon us. They're here. I'll be posting them and showing you through the word of God what God says. That the media and every other liar there is is going to try to tell you that this is climate change. No. No, 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 no. The same plagues of the Old Testament are the same plagues that are happening now. Why? Because of sin. Disobedience. No works. No obeying God. God is crying out right now through the plagues. I'm giving you the warnings. He to him. He come back, my people. Come back to obeying me. Come back to living holy. Come back to doing what I told you to do. And we're not hearing it. We're not listening to their messengers as well. In the last days, God said He would the, the word of God would be preached unto all the world. You're seeing people that have an urge to go out there and preach God's word. And you even got the devils. But they're not heeding to it. It's getting worse and worse and worse until God is no longer here. And there's no more God to pray to. And that judgment has been set. And now it's your time. To be punished. How much longer will you serve sin over God? Is serving the sin more important than serving God? Where is your obedience? Where is your faith? When the times of troubles come, you shouldn't turn your back on God. You should get more closer. For the time has come. The time has come. Which way do you choose? Which way is more important? Which God do you serve? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through obedience or do you serve Satan your really God which is sin who is going to come back for you on judgment day hey listen he did this he did that he's my son God going to honor that God kept crying at your heart begging come back to me I'm here waiting. Stop serving the devil. Ask me for help. One scripture says, that In that day they call upon the name of the Lord and they shall be saved. Yet you're not doing that. You're not even giving God time anymore. Like I said, everything is more important than God nowadays. That's a distraction from the devil as we just went over in Jasher. How the devil comes at you in every kind of way. And guess what he's trying to do? Get you to disobey the word. It's already there. It's already written. You're not searching it out. You're not searching for God. You're not doing anything to serve God. You're not putting no works into anything. And then you go around telling others you're Christian. And they're looking at you like, you were just drinking with me yesterday. You were smoking cigarettes the other day. They ain't saying nothing to you. They're looking at you like a hypocrite. You ain't no Christian. They know you're not a Christian. So I say this. And we're going to get back into uh, part three next week. Uh, forgive me for going back. But yeah. Um, we got to. We got. Faith without works is dead. Obedience is dead. Being alone. Your faith is dead. 
without without obedience. Don't mean nothing to God. So you need to get right with God now while you still got time and you still got breath in your lungs. I love you all. God bless you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus.